take heed. And uh, throughout this week, uh, on Thursday, I asked pastor for permission because I really wanted to seek God as far as today is concerned. And I prepared, I prayed. By the end of the day, I felt so inadequate. I felt, oh my God, is this what you really want me to share? I'm, I'm speaking out some of the things that happens to us as preachers. Pastors, you, you can bear witness, eh? <laughs> so Thursday night, I was praying and asking God, please make it clear. Then I started preparing another sermon. Right now, I have two sermons. <laughs> then yesterday, I prayed again and I felt settled at this. Amen. Therefore, I believe without a shadow of doubt, this is the word that God wants you to hear. Are you ready for me, somebody? Glory to God. Amen. The, word, the two words, take heed, means to pause and think. Pause and think. It also means pay attention or be cautious. And many times in the Bible, God has given us warning signs or he has given us an indication that we need to be careful. And it's usual even in our, in our world today, sometimes you walk in a road and you see a warning sign. Many people ignore the warning sign, but if you keep ignoring after a while, it can affect you in one way or another. Because by the time the warning sign is put, the, is put in a place, it means that something has been happening in this place that people need to be cautious. And the Bible has given us many warning signs. And many of them start by the statement, take heed. Other versions will say, be careful. Consider carefully. Pay close attention. Those are different versions. But from my study, the phrase take heed has been used in the New King James Version 49 times. And I think this was very intentional by God because he had to give us warning signs as we move on in our Christian journey. And therefore today, I know out of the 49 would do a sermon for maybe two years. But by the grace of God, I'll just share one or two as time permits in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So when you take heed, it means that you are seeing to it. You are seeing to it or considering to the point of acting upon it. When you are taking heed, you are seeing into it and you are considering to the point of acting upon it. God knew that sometimes we will be careless. God knew that sometimes we will forget and we will need to be reminded. And that's why as you read your, the Bible, as you read the word of God, you will get those warning signs here and there just to quicken you or to remind you or to warn you not to become careless. Second Timothy chapter 3, the Bible uh, narrates that uh, explains very well as Paul gives warning that in the last days we shall have perilous times. In the last times, we shall have uh, terrible times. Things will become evil. And those of you who understand the times that we are living in, I'm sure most of you found yourself saying, when something happens, you say, hey, for sure, we are living in the last days. How many bear witness today that you've seen some things happen and you say, hey, for sure, we are living in the last days. And Paul gives a catalog of things that people will be doing. The Bible says that they will be lovers of themselves. They will be proud, lovers of pleasure rather than God. And if you continue from verse 2, 3, and 4, they are, they've mentioned, uh, Paul mentioned various things that will happen in the last days. In verse 5, he says, Others will have the form of godliness, but they will deny the power thereof. In these last days, there are people who will have a form of godliness. They will look like they are very religious. They will look like they are very godly. They will do what other Christians do. They wear a form of godliness, but they have denied the power thereof. And on the same, he gave a warning and said, have nothing to do with such people. In these last days, we have to be cautious and understand there are some people, as much as yes, we would want to interact with them, the Bible gives us a warning and says, such people do not have anything to do with them. Why is the Bible warning? Because the more you interact with them, there are high chances that they will influence you to do things the way they are doing. 
So the Bible warns us there are people that we'll have to avoid, especially as the Bible gives us the catalog of the kind of people that will be there in the last days. And I pray that God will deliver you from such people in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As a believer, we must understand the times that we are living in and be alert. We must be on the guard lest we lose the, the gift of God in our lives or we lose the blessing that God would like to bestow upon our lives as we serve him. So when we come to church, believers, any time it is Sunday, like today it is Sunday, amen? Every time that it is Sunday or any time that you go to church, from the time you board the bus or from the time you wake up, by the time you get to the bus, though for those who come with the bus, for those who drive their own cars, may you have a prayer and let it be in your heart that God, I want you to minister to me. And God will minister to you in various ways. God can start ministering to you by the, uh, uh, with the person that you sit with in the bus. Is that true or not? You might be looking so dull and the person next to you just give you a, gives you a scripture and encourages you. When you walk into the compound, have an open heart and allow God to minister to you. And today I declare that God is speaking to you in Jesus' name. Amen. And as a church, we've been careful that everything that we do in this church is geared towards your spiritual growth, which should be reflected in your everyday life. We, know, we don't do anything here just to entice you or to make you feel nice. We have an intention that... Everything that we do in this place, whether it's the worship, whether it's the dance, whether it's the testimony, the small groups that we are encouraging, everything that we do in this church is to help you to grow spiritually. And as you grow spiritually, Paul says that you may prosper even as your soul prospers. So as you grow spiritually, it will be reflected in every other area of your life. Can I hear an amen? So today, by the grace of God, I want to give you two points. If I will finish, and I know that God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So point number one, I want you to, to write this, that take heed how you hear. The Bible gives us a caution, and it tells, the Bible tells us we need to be cautious. We need to take heed how we hear. And this we find from the book of Luke chapter 8, verse 18. You can turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 8, verse 18. Are you there, somebody? Amen. This is what the Bible says from the New King James Version. Therefore, take heed how you hear. For whosoever has to him, more will be given. And whoever does not have, even what he seems to have, will be taken away from him. So this morning I want to encourage us, as we come to church, as we hear the word of God, the Bible tells us we need to take heed how we hear. And because I am not uh, very good with words, sometimes I check for definitions. And uh, I went and checked what the meaning of the word how, what it means. And this is what it means. How means in what manner or way. So when the Bible says, take heed how you hear, it means take heed in what manner or way you hear. It also means for what reason. Therefore, take heed for what reason you hear. And also it means to what degree, extent, and amount. Every time you come into the house of God, any time you hear the declaration of the word of God, the Bible tells you that it is important that you take heed how you hear. There are people who come to church and whenever the word is being preached, they, they separate themselves from the word that is being spoken. And all along they think it is being spoken to someone else. Am I being real in the house? An example is being given, you separate yourself from that word and you imagine it can only happen to someone else. But today I want to tell you, take heed how you hear. Because every word that comes, God knows that you are in the house and you need to hear it. There is a time pastor was talking about the spirit of rebellion. 
And when he spoke about the spirit of rebellion, he even said himself, I keep praying for myself. Because I am not special, I can also be rebellious. So when some people come into the house of God and they hear a word, they imagine it's being spoken about someone else and it's not spoken about you. But I want to encourage us today, every time you come into the house of God, take heed how you hear by understanding that God is speaking to you. As much as, yes, it might read more openly to someone else, consider yourself a human being and you can easily be overtaken with what has overtaken other people. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Whenever the word of God is being spoken, think about yourself. Think about yourself as a person and pray for yourself that you will not get yourself into something that is wrong. Pastor has done a sermon series on we are a family and he has given us very powerful nuggets. But there are people who have come here and they have closed their mind and they have said that is for other people. I will never join a C group. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. For that sermon series to work in your life, you must put it into practice. You must put it into practice. I'm saying you must put it into practice for the power of God to work in your life. Never seclude yourself and imagine it's for someone else. Praise the name of Jesus. A story is being told of a man who was very committed and he used to attend church every now and then. I heard this from another preacher. So he would attend service and every time after the service, he would go and greet the pastor and say, Hey, today what wa mekatwa? Hey, you know, he would always point it at other people because every time he thought that the message was never his, the message was just for other people. So any example that will be given, he knew. He can even buy CD for that person if he didn't come to church that day. Because hey, this message was yours. So this day, this specific day, there was a big storm. But this man, because he was always committed, the pastor was there, and the man was the only person who came to church that day. And the pastor said, praise the Lord, at least finally, he is here alone and he will take the word of God. And the pastor preached. You know, yes, pastors are very passionate. It doesn't matter the, the, the crowd. Even one person, a pastor can really preach. I remember when we started the church, the church was small, but pastor would preach until you think we are like 10,000 people in that small hall. That is the passion that a pastor would have. So this pastor preached that day. He placed all the examples. And you know, sometimes as a pastor, you know even what the people are going through. After the service, as usual, the man came and told Pastor, I wish they were there. I am telling you, this message, and I wish we recorded, because they need to hear. And Pastor shook his head and he said, oh my, I am praying for you that that, that will not be you in Jesus' name. Every time you hear the word of God, put yourself in it and say, God help me. If it is a rebuke, allow the rebuke to get into your heart. Because if you don't secure yourself, I am telling you, it doesn't matter how strong you are. One of the take heed, the Bible says, those who, who are standing, take heed lest you fall. Can I hear an amen? So every time, listen to the word of God and listen it with intentionality that the word is being spoken for you. And what you do if you've received the word, it will be reflected as you put it into practice. Praise the name of Jesus. Your spiritual ear should always be alert to hear what the Spirit of God says. Get the content and connect with what God would want you to do. Every time you come into the presence of God. Praise the name of Jesus. Don't filter the word of God based on your prejudices or your preconceived ideas. When you come to church, you come with a preconceived idea. And you imagine today, I can even imagine what pastor is going to talk about. So you listen to the word of God with preconceived ideas. You will never allow the word of God to work in your heart. So every time you come into the house of God, receive the whole counsel of God and pray for yourself, for your brothers, pray for your sisters, but never judge others and seclude yourself from the word of God. Take heed how you hear. Have you gotten a word today this morning? And number two, which is the last one. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Take heed what you hear. Take heed what you hear. Remember I've said the first one was how 
you hear. And I've given you the scripture. The second one is take heed what you hear. Some version would say how you listen. But Mark chapter 4 verse 24 will be our scripture for that. Mark chapter 4 verse 24. This is what the Bible says. Then he said to them, this was Jesus, take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has, to him more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Praise the name of Jesus. It will not be taken away from me in Jesus' name. Because I will take heed what I hear. What you hear, and I want you to listen to me carefully, what you hear affects your behavior either positively or negatively. What you hear affects your behavior either positively or negatively. It will affect you positively if it is a positive word. If it is a negative word, it has a way of affecting you negatively. Therefore, what you expose yourself for, or what you ex expose yourself to for a long time has a way of influencing you. I want you to turn to your neighbor this morning and tell your neighbor what you expose yourself to for a long time has a way of influencing you. And I believe as a believer, you wouldn't want to be influenced negatively. Because you've shifted from the kingdom of darkness, the Bible says we've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, that we may proclaim the praises of the Lord Jesus Christ. So in the kingdom of light, you wouldn't want negative influence. Am I speaking to real people today? And I appreciate my brothers. I've seen you coming in. Thank you very much. Amen. Don't allow negative influence into your life. What you hear, for those who are writing, has a way of reprogramming your mind. What you hear has a way of reprogramming your mind. It changes how your mind thinks about people, about things, and it is very true. Have you ever been in a state where someone comes and tells you something very negative about someone that you honored or loved? All of a sudden, you start looking at that person differently. So I'm being real today. So don't allow negativity to be filled into your spirit as far as other people are concerned. And right now I come against the spirit of gossip in Jesus' name. When you entertain negative things about people, it has a way of influencing how you think or even how you look at them. Praise the name of Jesus. So we must take heed what we hear. We must take heed what we hear. We must be selective on choosing what to listen to. Some people, you have to shut them even before they talk. Some people, when they hear you listen to them, let it come in and go out because sometimes you cannot avoid. We have media talking negatively sometimes about the church. And the more you listen to it, if you're not careful, that's how you'll start looking at pastors. That's how you'll start thinking about the church. If you're not careful, it's just a matter of time. All you need is a small trigger and you're out of church. Why? Because your mind has been reprogrammed by what you keep listening to, what you expose yourself to. You must be careful as a believer to ensure that you only allow the positive to get into your spirit. Otherwise, if you entertain the negative, it has a way of altering your right way of thinking. Follow me this morning in Jesus' name. So when the Bible says, take heed of what? The what is the substance of what you hear. The substance. The substance of what you hear. So there are those that you, you discard selectively. And there are those that you allow in if it is positive and it's something that will build your life. Now, one of the things that can happen to us, and most of the time, virtuous women, you relate with this. And I keep saying that negative words that you heard while growing up has a way of affecting you. Some of us grew up in dysfunctional families. Some of us grew up in families where father and mother were not in good terms. And once in a while, because parents will always want to take children to, take their, to be on their side, and maybe you are influenced by your father or by your mother, by what they said. 
I cancelled some years ago a couple, and this, they were newly married, they were young in marriage, and every time this man would look at the wife, he always looked at the wife as, with suspicion that the wife is not faithful. This is a girl who has grown in church. He has never known any other relationship out there. Uh, he has not known any other man. She was faithful, but every time the man was looking at her and would just want to imagine she's been out there. And now for a long time, I, after counseling and counseling, I had to come to the, to the underlying issue. And the truth came out that while he was growing, the father constantly said that women are prostitutes. Women are prostitutes. So when he would say that, it looked like a simple thing. But this man got married in church. But every time he looked at the wife, he looked at the wife as a prostitute. And he never valued this person. So what you hear has a way of affecting how you think about people or even looking at situation. Maybe you are influ influence someone say, never trust men. Young girls, if you're here, or women... Maybe an incident happened and you, even friends talked about a situation and they say, never trust a man. So if you're not careful, it's a word that was released in the spirit. If you conceived it, it is a seed that is in your heart. If you get into a relationship, you'll always struggle with the issue of trust. So you must be very careful. Other things is words that were spoken when you're, word, when you're young, describing your physical makeup. Virtuous women, are you in the house? I will not go into details. Those stories I share with you alone when we are in the meeting. But it is the truth. If you are told your eyes are as big as Gololi. <laughs> Macho kama Gololi. <laughs> On a light note, my daughter one time, they were being taught in class. <laughs> and the teacher used that. My daughter has beautiful eyes. As beautiful as the fathers. And as the mothers... <laughs> Isn't it? Anyway, now the teacher, in admiration, macho kama gololi is a beautiful thing. But my daughter had macho yako mazuri kama golira. Gorilla. <laughs> so it was a big issue. She came home and shared. She was crying. We also felt very bad. How can a teacher tell my child that your eyes are as big as gorilla? So, as usual, parents in the morning, you are caring about, <laughs> about your child. So, I went. I am the one who, I went. Pastor. <laughs> Pastor was praying. <laughs> uh -huh. I went to the headmaster and I asked for that teacher. So, we had a meeting. I want you to explain. How you could tell my daughter that her eyes are as big as the ones of gorilla? <laughs> Do gorillas have big eyes? Oh. So finally the teacher explained and he told us it's a beautiful description of beautiful eyes. Macho kamago, go, go lowly, not gorilla. Anyway, that was on a light note. It's important, isn't it? So sometimes you are described... Maybe how your head, the shape of your head is. Praise the name of Jesus. Maybe how your nose looks like. Another lady told me that she was told by the father that her legs look like the legs of a stove. <laughs> Another one was told that her legs look like a boat. Munajua boat vile like this. So this could be Maybe a parent was angry at that point, or it was made on a light note, like Gololi, the one I'm talking about, but it's stuck in that person's heart. If they are not careful, it keeps affecting who they are and how they perceive themselves. Are we together? Words that were used to describe your abilities. Maybe you're not doing very well in a certain field as your, the significant people in your life expected you. And they, maybe they will describe you as a foolish person. If you don't deal with those things, they have a way of affecting you. When you get to a, a, an office and you get a negative uh, report about even your work, it affects you because of an underlying thing that you are never able to deal with. Are we together? What you expose yourself to, that is the second thing. Too much negative news will affect your perspective about life and people. 
I thank God for the news. And even in our nation, it's true. I don't know how they never find good news. They only show us bad news. It's very unfortunate, isn't it? There's a time Pastor got angry and he said, I'm not watching news again. And you understand, even during politics and all that, uh, campaigns and all that, you would hear very negative things. If you're not careful, this is what you expose your mind to and your spirit to every now and then. It has a way of affecting your perspective about life and about people. But don't say, what do I do? And it's playing in the radio, it's playing in the TV. You have control which station to listen to. You have control which movies to watch. Am I speaking to Christians in the house? I'm saying you have control which movies to watch. You have control of which music to listen to, which station to listen to. Amen. Because what you hear has a way of affecting you. Are we together? Yes. The media has, hey, I don't know what I would say about it, or the movies that we see today, even the cartoons that were innocent in the past, nowadays they are not as innocent. But you as a believer, you must weigh yourself and realize this one minus me. And you decide we will not watch it. Praise the name of Jesus. Sometimes one of the things we do as a, a moment to relax, honestly, we do watch movies. And we are not backslidden. Praise the name of Jesus. So many times, sometimes we open, a, we start a movie, and it looks like it's really catchy. But in the middle, we realize this one, the motive in this movie is not good. No matter how much it had captured us, we say, stop. Then we start looking for another one. So you have power to decide which movies to watch. If you're not careful, you see the spirit and the agenda in the movies today is to push for gayism. Am I being real? Do you know if you watch a movie series, hallelujah, from the beginning, what they will do, they will make that person that is admirable in the movie very appealing to you that you want to follow. By the time he is kissing another man, it looks normal. You get what I'm saying? But you must take heed what you hear. Otherwise, it will influence you. Am I speaking in the house? Listen, do you know King Saul? King Saul in the Bible, when God's grace came out of his life and he was no longer, God had said he's no longer the king of Israel. The Bible says that there was a tormenting spirit that used to come upon him. Until one time he looked for a minstrel. Someone who would play music for him. And as David was chosen, he would come and play music. And the Bible says as he was playing in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 23, that as he was playing, then Saul would become refreshed and well, and the distressing spirit will depart from him. So even the music you listen to can distress you or remove de depression from you. It can refresh you or make you not refreshed. So as believers, we must be careful. Praise the name of Jesus. Ask your neighbor, by the way, which kind of music do you listen to? Yes, and pastor would say that many of us during the week, we are just on secular music. By the time we come to church, we're just biting our, when we see songs, we wonder, eh, where are these songs found? Because our spiritual antenna is just on the other, on the worldly things, and we don't connect with the spiritual things. Watch, take heed what you listen to, amen. The other thing is the friends that surround you have an influence because as friends, I'm sure you enjoy being in the company of friends because you talk to one another. Am I being real? So they have a way of influencing you in one way or another. You must take heed the people that surround you. If they are full of negativity, you must say goodbye. If you have no authority to silence them, the best thing for you as a believer to stand is for you to say goodbye. Praise the name of Jesus. The WhatsApp groups that you are in, are they just sending negative things? In our, some, someone, I don't know who it was, one time they formed a group and by, by mistake they put the number for the church that I have. They put the number for the church that I have. You know how you just bring in people in a group? All of a sudden they had sent for pornography. Pornography on, those, on, that, on that platform. My goodness. Would you stay in a group like that? 
unless you have a demon. And I rebuke that demon in the name of Jesus. Hey, How have I remembered that thing? It's terrible. So the, the kind of friends that you associate with, you, you must be very, very careful. Praise the name of Jesus. The kind of groups you are in, you must be very, very careful. If they are full of evil communication, if when you meet, all they talk about is negativity about church, what business are you doing with such people? I am asking, if people you are around with, your friends, every time you meet, eh -eh, uliona, uliona, and can I tell you today, it doesn't matter what media says. Keep off from talking about pastors. Keep off from talking about churches. Those are things that belong to God. Pastors belong to God. They might fall in one way or another. But what business are you doing as a Christian? Joining and believers. Talk about pastors. Praise the name of Jesus. Because the more you negative you become, the more influence you are negatively. You start looking at your pastor like the other pastor they were talking about. And it's just a matter of time. Respect goes. And maybe even sometimes you don't go to church. When they talk negatively about church, be the one who will advocate and say, it doesn't matter what they say, I stand for the church in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33 and 34, do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Some people are in church, but they do not have the knowledge of God. And Paul says, I speak this to your shame. It is shameful. If you come to church from January to December, but there is no godliness in you, may God have mercy on us in the name of Jesus. Evil company. Other version says evil communication. Other version says evil companionship. Evil friends. They will corrupt good habit. Be very careful. Because we are in the kingdom of God, we must guard what God has given to us. The devil is after your life. The devil is after your destiny. He's not happy that you've given your life to Christ. He will throw in any force to just pluck you from your purpose, from your destiny. But today I say minus you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the solution to this, we must invest in the word of God. We must invest in the word of God. Jesus said in John chapter, 60, chapter 6 verse 63, the words that I speak are spirit and life. Hallelujah. The words that I speak are spirit and they are life. The words that come from Jesus, they, they, they are spirit and they give life. So if you're here and you want life, you must connect to the word of God. Purpose that you will listen to the word of God. Amen. And pastor, pastors are shepherds and we have a great shepherd. And sometimes he will send a warning to us. He would send a warning to us because we know we are living in a different world. I wonder how Paul would write the Bible today with the social media aspect. I wonder how he would address it. Praise the name of Jesus. So if your pastor guards you from doing something that is wrong, take heed and listen carefully. Take heed. Take heed because if you're not careful, you'll be carried away. I don't want to be coming to church from January to December and my life is the same. Do I have a witness in the house that you'll be, far, you'll be seen in church but nothing is happening in your life? I refuse in Jesus' name. So I will soak myself in the word of God to ensure that the life of God is in my life. And I want to ask you, how many of us after Sunday, that is the last time you'll see a Bible, that is the last time you'll listen to a message. It is so sad it is so sad. And as I look at you, I know what I'm speaking is the truth. Many people only open their Bibles when they come to church on Sunday. And that's why we are encouraging you, come for prayers. Because it awakens your spirituality. Go for the C group meetings. It awakens your spirituality. Amen. And pastor has made his podcast free. It is free for you. All you need is to download Praise the name of Jesus. Instead of entertaining negativity, you can purpose that each and every day I will listen to the word of God. I will read the word for myself. I will study the word. Amen. 
Reading sometimes people feel like the word is too ambiguous. You're not able to flow. But take more a moment, even if it's one verse. You take time and study it. It will do something in your heart. And like just becoming a normal Christian who comes on Sunday, you put down your Bible hey, until the next Sunday. May God have mercy on us in Jesus' name. The Bible says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Praise the name of Jesus. So if words can reprogram our minds, for us to be transformed, we need to listen to the word of God over and over so that our lives are transformed. Can I hear an amen? Read the word of God for yourself. Listen to worship songs because that helps you to detox what is negative so that you're not conformed to this world, but you're renewed in your mind in the name of Jesus Christ. Make it a habit and purpose that you'll not start a day without the word of God. You will not live a full week without hearing the word of God. You must purpose that you will grow in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. And as I said, you must be selective hearer so that you, say, you refuse to entertain negativity and you embrace that which is positive. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1, the Bible says, Therefore we must give the more honest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. Church, I want to tell you, if we don't take heed on the things that we have heard, we will drift away. And that's why even listening to pastor's message every now and then, the sermons that are free on YouTube, pastor's message, because YouTube is full of many things. YouTube is full of? You must be selective. Turn to your neighbor, look at them very seriously and tell them, be selective. And as shepherds, we've not left you vulnerable. We have not, hey, may talk of Zurikweli? Vulnerable. Yes. Hey. We have covered all these loopholes because pastor summons are on YouTube. You can get them Facebook Live. You can get them on podcast so that you are selective. You will not be drifted away. Your shepherd wants the best for you. So his words, if I may say, they are spirit and they, li they are life because he speaks the mind of Christ for your life. Can I hear an amen? Take heed. And if you are not careful, the Bible says, as I've read Hebrews chapter 2, Verse 1, this is very powerful. We must give more earnest. But earnest, you can imagine what it means. Eh? Honestly, heed to the things we have heard, which has brought to us salvation. Salvation. The same scripture continues to say, how then shall we escape if we neglect the message that has brought for us salvation? How, we, how then can we escape if we neglect the message that has helped you find your purpose in God? How else can you escape if you neglect the message or the word that has brought you salvation? Take heed and follow what the word of God says to you. Amen. What happens also, I've said we must take heed to follow the word of God and and give ourselves, invest in the word of God. These are solutions to the many things that I talked about. So if you had negativity from your past, the Bible says every tongue that rises in judgment, what do you do? What do you do to every negative word? You condemn, amen. Yes, if they said you are stupid, right now in Christ, you say I am the head and not the tail. I am successful. It's only mathematics that I had a problem. But I'm not done ahead. I am good in English. Can I hear an amen? amen? Hallelujah. Or I am good in singing. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Like me, I struggle with vocabularies. They are in here, but they cannot come. I have a phobia for big words. I cannot pronounce. Sometimes I know, but I, it is a phobia. But does that mean that I, I am not blessed? Listen, I am blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. And I'm preaching and you're getting blessed. Can I hear an amen? amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you nullify negativity and allow the positive word of God to define who you are. And the other thing on the same to find solution to this is that because what you hear can bring fear and replace faith in your life, you must embrace what gives you faith. Praise the name of Jesus. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So 
when you are exposed too much, avoid being exposed to negativity for a long time. Because the more negativity you listen to, the more it deflates your faith. When we get born again, we are passionate about doing the things of God. So passionate that if we entertain negativity, it stops us from doing what God intends for us. I remember I keep sharing this. When I was a young girl, I was really passionate about the Lord when I got saved. Very passionate, very prayerful, never missed church when I was available as, because I was also in school. I was always there for the things of God. And as a young girl, at home, after we finished with our house chores and everything, I would shower on a Saturday in the afternoon and go with the New Testament Bible. That is what I had. I would go and just open anywhere and start preaching. Not preaching, reading the word. That is the little knowledge I had. And the knowledge that I had at that point is that Jesus is coming in the year 2000. <laughs> so I would convince anyone when I'm preaching, I would open the New Testament, read, read a whole chapter for someone. I ask, just be patient and listen. I read and then I tell them, you must be born again. Jesus is coming soon. And he's coming in the year 2000. It was in foolishness, yes. But I led many to Christ. Whether they stood or not, me, I know. It was recorded in heaven, I led them to Christ. Amen. So someone came and told me, hey, it is not good for you to do soul winning alone. But they never gave me the solution. So in the process, fear came in. And I was never motivated to continue doing. Unfortunately, I stopped because of the fear that something bad would happen to me if I go for soul winning. Now I want to share to, with us today on the story of David and Goliath. David and Goliath. And the Bible talks to us in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17. I'm almost finishing. 1 Samuel chapter 17. I will read verse 4, then 8 to 11. Are you there? 1 Samuel 17, verse 4, 8 to 11. The Bible says, And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines, named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubit, cubits and a span. Then the next scripture describes how he looked. Then the Bible continued to say in, to say in verse 8 to 11, Then he stood and cried out, there was, there was a battle between the children of Israel, the army of the children of Israel, and the army of the Philistines. So Goliath stood in his might stature, and he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and you the servants of Saul? Choose a man from yourself, for yourself, and let him come to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then he will be your servant. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and servers. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we might fight together. When Saul and, all the, and Israel heard these words, heard what? These words. When they did what? When they heard these words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. When they heard this word, these words, they were dismayed and greatly afraid, made afraid. They became afraid. They were terrified. They lost hope. They, could feel, they, were feel, they felt incapacitated. They felt like they can do nothing. So words that you hear has a way of influencing you. And the reason I'm addressing this is because in our current times, there are Goliaths all over the place, dimini diminishing the strength that we have within ourselves, making us feel like we cannot make it, attacking the church and speaking negatively, about what God is doing as far as this generation is concerned. But I'm here after every Goliath in the name of Jesus. The Goliath of the church in the name of Jesus. He has no power over the church in Jesus' name. And every Goliath who has been speaking negative things to your life. Every Goliath who has made you feel like you are a nobody. Every Goliath who keeps feeding you with negativity. 
I am against them in the name of Jesus Christ. Samuel chapter 17, verse 17, the Bible says, Then Jesse said to his son David, Take now for your brothers an ephah of this dried grain and these ten loaves and run to your brothers at the camp. Now the, two, the three sons of Jesse, the brothers to David, were in the... In the uh, hey. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. They were at the battlefield at this moment. So Jesse sends uh, David to take for them food in the battlefield. Now we now see David appearing in the scene. Verse 22 to 24, the Bible says, And David left his supplies. He came with it. When he came to the camp, he realized things were not okay. He left the supplies in the hand of supply keeper, ran to the army, and came and greeted his brothers. Then all, then as he talked with them, there was a champion, the Philistine of God, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines. And he spoke according to the same word, the words that he had spoken to the children of the army of Israel. And the Bible describes it was for 40 days, day and night. Every day, day and night, he defied the army of God. He intimidated them. He was trying to show them they cannot make it. Bring one person, and today you will end up serving us. And all the men of Israel, and so David had. 40 days, the others were hearing what Goliath was saying. But this day when David was sent, Goliath came out and he said the same thing that he had said to the army the past 40 days. And at this point, David also heard. So David heard what these armies had heard for 40 days. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled from him and, de dreadful, and were dreadful, afraid. They had become so afraid. The words that you hear can make you afraid, can make you lose the energy to fight and go out there and conquer what you need to conquer. If you've heard over and over that business is not working in these times, you can become afraid even if you have a business idea. Am I speaking to someone? So negative words that you hear out there, you must be very careful. David had, but also the other armies had had this the same for 40 days. The Bible continues to say, verse 31 and 32, Now, when the words which David spoke, because he also spoke something, were heard, they reported them to Saul, and he sent, them, he sent for him. Because when David heard, he challenged, and he said, you will not continue defying the armies of God. You will not continue putting the name of God down. He stood and he was ready to fight the enemy. This is what verse 32 says. Then David said to Saul, when he went to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with these Philistines. Now, what is the difference between the armies? Remember, David was a shepherd boy. All he knew was to take care of the, the sheep. Of course, he had, he had an opportunity. Uh, later on, he shares with King Saul, and he said how he killed a bear and a lion but with his bare hand. But remember, these other armies were trained from their youthful time, and they were all afraid. What made David different from the armies is that when he had, he defied what Goliath had said. Praise the name of Jesus. So he refused to agree with what Goliath had said. And today I'm here to encourage someone. Praise the name of Jesus. Let no man's fail because of Goliath. Your servant will go and fight the Philistine. While you are out there in the battlefield, I was on my knees praying. And I am here to tell you, let no man, let no son, no daughter in the house be afraid of what is being said out there. Can I hear an amen? amen. For today in Jesus' name, we shall bring down every Goliath in our life in Jesus' name. Praise the name of Jesus. So David had an advantage over the brothers because for 40 days they had the insults, ridicule, and, and intimidation. But David at the field, what he was hearing was God because the story is clear about David. Every time he was taking care of the sheep, he was worshiping the Lord. He was communing with God. So his heart was full of faith. So today, instead of negativity, we shall replace it with the word of God, which brings us faith in the name of Jesus.
And we shall not be afraid of any Goliath. We shall not be afraid of anyone who brings negativity to us. We shall stand by the word of God and bring down the Goliath in the name of Jesus. So David, of course, brought out his testimony. And I'm seeing you testifying in the name of Jesus. When challenges come, you can remember what God has done in the past and stand by it and say, even this one I will conquer. I prophesy that you will succeed in that business in Jesus' name. You will succeed in that marriage in the name of Jesus. When Goliaths are saying that marriages will not work, I prophesy that your marriage will work in the name of Jesus. Single ladies, when people are saying that they are not meant to marry you, I prophesy that you will be located in the name of Jesus. You will get married in the name of Jesus. You is looking for a job. Hallelujah. And people have said there are no jobs. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Every negative word comes down today. May you go to that office in the name of Jesus and get that job. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are victorious in the name of Jesus. But you will get this victory when you feel the word of God in your heart. I give you the strength, the faith to walk out this week and face every Goliath that has been intimidating you in your place of work, in your family, as you raise your children in the name of Jesus and declare that you'll make it in the name of Jesus. The story is clear that with a sling and a stone, David was able to bring Goliath down. In the name of Jesus, every Goliath is coming down in Jesus' name. The Goliaths who have been ridiculing you in the name of Jesus, the Goliaths who have made you feel inadequate, they are coming down in the name of Jesus. You will take heed what you hear because you will never allow negativity into your spirit in the name of Jesus. What you hear can also torment. What you hear can torment because some of us are in a place where it looks like it is above us. You are in an office where each and every day, the fact that they know you are a believer, they will always get something to ridicule you with. They will always want to intimidate you. But I declare today that the Lord who delivers will deliver you in the name of Jesus. The Lord will deliver you in the name of Jesus. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 7 and 11, the Bible talks about a man by the name Lot. The Bible says, and delivered righteous... Lord, this is the Lord, who was oppressed by filthy contact, conduct of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, to, for, for that righteous man dwelling among them, the wicked people in Sodom and Gomorrah, tormented his righteous soul day by day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. You might be in a place where every day you are tormented. But God, the Lord who delivered Lot is the Lord who will deliver you in Jesus' name. If you're in a family where every time you stand as a believer, they want to make you feel like you are a fool, you don't think right. There are people here who in their families, they are told they are brainwashed. I'm here to tell you that the Lord who delivered Lot will deliver you in the name of Jesus. May you receive your deliverance in Jesus' name. Then the, the Bible continues to say, then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. And especially those who walk according to the flesh in the last uncleanness, last of uncleanness and despise authority. They are presumptuous, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries, whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring reviling accusation against them before the Lord. I read this scripture and I paused a bit to realize that there are people who use intimidating words and they have a spirit that they are not afraid of even authorities. They are full of uncleanness. They can speak negative things and not even shy off, shy away from speaking negativity. And the Bible says because of what was happening in Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot being a righteous man, his soul was vexed. I pray for anyone here who is in a surrounding where every day when he thinks about going to work, he wishes that no one knew that he was born again. Your social media, you never say, share anything to do with church lest a colleague sees and they put you down. But from today, I give you power to do it in the name of Jesus. For the Lord will deliver you in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I'm saying the Lord will deliver you in the name of Jesus. Then the Lord will deliver you from all the temptation in the name of Jesus Christ. This kind of people who surround, the Bible says they were presumptuous. Presumptuous person is a person who fails to observe the limit of what is permitted and appropriate. appropriate. There are people who are presumptuous. And as I speak this, I'm speaking to the church in Kenya in the name of Jesus. If we are not careful, the church in Kenya will coil and become timid, will not have a voice. But in the name of Jesus, God is delivering the church in Kenya in Jesus' name. Most of us are not able to even go and do outreach because of the kind of feedback that you get from the people we witness to. But from today, we shall not be afraid. Like Paul, he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God that brings salvation. Praise the name of Jesus. We are encouraging members of this church to be soul winners, to not be afraid to share about the gospel of Jesus. When you're in that matatu, don't be intimidated by any Goliath. When they bring a negative thing, a counter, -attack, a counter attack it with the word of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we shall take heed what we hear and not allow it to affect us. Because when they speak something negative, don't entertain it. Speak the word of God back and tell them as much as, is there, as, much as they are fake notes, they are also genuine notes. The same way you are genuine. Turn to your neighbor and say, our Christianity is genuine. We are confident about it in the name of Jesus. So we must take heed in the name of Jesus. These presumptuous people, I know where I'm going. And the, those, he was and here. May you hear what the Spirit of God is saying. These presumptuous, presumptuous the synonyms, synonyms for presumptuous, overconfident. They are people who attack the things of God with confidence and they don't even shudder. <laughs> you see our vocabularies. Eh? These presumptuous people are arrogant, egotistical, overbold, audacious, familiar. Messiah audacious in Metoka. Praise the name of Jesus. There are people out there who are not afraid of intimidating the things of God. They speak without shyness. And they don't understand as they talk about church, as they talk about the men of God, as they talk about Christianity, they are defying the name of God. I pray that God will deliver you from these people. But you shall not be afraid of them in the name of Jesus. If you are afraid, just know you've taken heed what they have been saying. But today we are counteract, contradicting every negativity in the name of Jesus. And we shall embrace what the word of God says in Jesus' name. So when you meet someone who wants to gossip and talk about the th uh, negatively about the things of God, refuse it in the name of Jesus and stand by the word of God and don't entertain it in your spirit. These people, the Bible also says they are self-willed. They are obstinately doing what one wants in spite of the wishes or orders of others. So when they are going against authority, when they are speaking against the authority of God, you know church, church, it's only that maybe we, some people feel that they are intimidated, but church is stronger than the government. Do you know that? In the spiritual realm, God esteems the church so much. And I pray that we'll come to a place where the government leaders will seek solution from the church in the name of Jesus. What has happened in the past is that... We, we have been bombarded with negativity until church we think we are, we are inferior. We are not inferior. Can I hear an amen? We have so much power and boldness. So as we take heed of what we hear, we will rise above negativity in the name of Jesus. If you are surrounded with such, the same way God delivered Lord, may the Lord deliver you in the name of Jesus. As I conclude, I want to read the same scripture that I read in Mark chapter 4, verse 24 to 25 from the message version. The Bible says, listen carefully to what I am saying. That is, take heed. Listen carefully to what I am saying and be wary of the shrewd advice that tells you how to get ahead in the world on your own. Be wary of the shrewd advice that tells you how to get ahead in the world on your own. Giving, not getting, is the way generosity begets generosity. Stinginess 
impoverish, impoverishes. Eish, imetoka tuwa lakini sawa. Iko tu sawa. Praise the name of Jesus. This translation cle clearly explains to us what this portion of scripture was saying. And as I'm saying, the attack that is in the church, every negativity that is out there, you must be very, very careful. The Bible says, be wary and shrewd. Uh, be wary of the shrewd advice. What is out there is a shrewd advice for Christians. It's a shrewd advice because they try to tell you how you can make it. But reality is, as they oppose tithing, that is one thing that has been attacked the most. Take heed what you hear. As they attack tithing, they know how they make their ends meet. They have a worldly way of meeting their, of prospering. But the truth of the word of God is that tithing and giving of offerings are the ways of a believer to open up the floodgates of heaven and make you prosperous. And many of us, because we did not take heed what we had, we entertain negativity. Every time, sometimes you, you want to open your wallet to remove your tithe or to give your tithe. That message from hell comes in your mind immediately and you say no. Why? Because you are not careful to be on guard over what you hear. The negativity that you hear about church, if you're not careful, it affects how you do things. Okay? When you, you are told to serve in church, you say, hey, kazi ya kanisa mimi siwezi. But not knowing that God is the one who rewards you. By just serving, you get rewarded. And reward is bigger than salary. As I serve here, I am on salary. But many times I shudder and I say, as I receive this, of course, because I'm fully in the ministry. As I receive this, may it not be measured up with the reward that God would want to give me. Praise the name of Jesus. Because reward will always be bigger than your salary. So church gives you an opportunity to serve. Take it as a privilege. Don't allow negativity to make you not serve. Are we together? Because as you serve, as you come and clean the church, there is something that you are doing in the heart, touching the heart of God that will cause a blessing to come into your life in the name of Jesus. Church today have said many things. But in conclusion, please take heed. How you hear and what you hear. Because it matters. It will affect your spirit and don't pollute your spirit in the name of Jesus. Are you blessed today? Are you blessed by the word of God? Will you take heed? Will you take heed how you hear and what you hear? Put your hands together. Celebrate Jesus in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to put our hands together and welcome pastor as he concludes the service. God bless you. Let's stand to our feet. Let's appreciate Pastor Mary one more time.